Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Don Severin. Some of you guys already know me as DHDS Racer. Today I am bringing you a tip video on how to replace the gears on an HXT 900 servo. Very, very popular servo because it's very cheap and very high torque and speed for its price and size. So if you guys want to know how to replace the internal gears, follow through this video. It's a little bit long, but it does go through in detail how to do this properly without destroying anything and, uh, and without just getting generally mixed up. So um, enjoy the video and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Hobby King Live, and follow us on Twitter for more updates like this. Also, we've got some competitions, prize giveaways, all sorts of fun stuff coming up. So go ahead and subscribe. I hope you enjoy the video and I hope it helps you out. So we're doing a uh, gear change on an HXT 900 servo. Um, four plastic gears come in the kit. And that's basically the kit right there, even though it's out of focus, it uh, should do. Now basically what we do here is, uh, the first thing you want to do is remove the four screws from the back. Give us access to the top. Bam. Just like that. Now, uh, there's really no true trick to uh, to getting these gears off, all four of them, but uh, I recommend starting with the, the loose gears, essentially, and uh, that's going to be the slave gears. Now, the best way to do that is grab the top pin here on the small side and just give it a little bit of a lift. It doesn't take a whole lot, but uh, there we go. A little bit of a lift, and you should actually be able to slide these essentially off to the side like that okay now I actually recommend keeping these gears together on its spindle um, it tends to help quite a bit so put that to the side both together now the slightly more difficult part about this is uh, removing the top gear off of this because it's actually a little bit of a press fit now if you notice this bottom one actually floats, so I can actually just push that down a touch. Now that gives you access to the little metal spindle right there. So, needle those pliers, grab the spindle itself, obviously without destroying any of the gears. Um, you need to actually tug on this pretty good, there we go, to get that piece off, right? So that piece is actually a press fit. That's the only one that actually is a full press fit and is not allowed to spin, okay? So you can set that aside. Now this piece will actually just lift off. Obviously be careful not to screw up the gears. You probably shouldn't actually do what I was doing, but um, just push from the bottom. And that piece will pop off, okay? Now, um, I'd recommend taking the servo. You wanna obviously look here, and I'll show you some detailed pictures here. Um, if you look there, you'll see a little V-shaped notch. And that notch is right at the bottom there, right where the screwdriver tip is. That V-shaped notch needs to line up with the small notch on this gear, right? So if you see that notch there, that notch has to line up with that V. Um, and both of those should be pointed towards the wires of the servo. That is pretty much necessary. If that is not lined up, if this does not line up with the center of the V and the center of the V does not line up with the wire, then you will actually have a servo that does not have full, um, full control. It will not be allowed to reach both limits. Keep in mind, these are two separate gears on this one spindle, right? So what I'd recommend is just trying to match them up as best you can. You always have the one with the tall gear on top, and then there's a fine mesh with a short gear on bottom. So what I'll actually do is pull the axle out Take the old gears, toss those, or whatever you'd like to do with them, and uh, put this back together, just like that. Okay, so we've got the new gears on the spindle. Then what we need to do is the slightly less fine geared piece with the hole in it. That's essential. The one with the hole goes back on the main drive spindle. Doesn't matter how that goes on because it floats, right? Okay, now you actually don't want to let that settle all the way because you need to kind of look in there and see where that V-shape is, okay? So make sure that V-shape is in line with the wires. Take this guy and actually line it up as well. 
and go ahead and just do a light press on that. A little bit of pressure, it'll go on and it should stay, right? So now what we have is the piece with uh, both gears on, press fit, and it's all lined up towards the wires. From there, we take our recently put together combo here. Tall gears go up, all right? Tall gears go up, and you can actually just sort of making sure that this piece is up all the way. You can actually sort of just slide these into place. Okay, so you just slide that into place. You might have to rotate and kind of mess around with it a little bit, but eventually you should be able to push the pin on top down until it settles. Okay, so that is actually the the main part of the gear change right there. Just make sure that that pin on the very top, right there, actually fits in its groove. That way, all the gears will line up. Okay, from there, sort of do just a little bit of a press on the top. Make sure everything's settled back down. Then you can go ahead and put the cap back on. Sometimes you have to wiggle this around a little bit to get it to fit. Um, it should be a snug fit and it should actually sort of snap into place where you can feel everything line up. So you want to make sure that's nice and snug. Okay. Now go ahead and put all the screws back in. Tighten those down. Don't need to be too tight. Remember they're going into plastic and it's basically a machine thread so it's possible to strip these out. And there's really not a whole lot of pressure on them. Okay. I've got a servo horn and I'll bring in my trusty servo tester and see if I screwed this up. This goes in the negative and we have a fully functional servo. Okay, full right, full left. Nothing to it. Alright guys, thanks for watching.